first documented case of parthenogenesis in crocodilians. Two workers in Costa Rica have reported the first case of virgin birth among crocodiles. A female American crocodile kept in isolation for 16 years has laid 14 eggs in her enclosure. Scientists suggest that dinosaurs may have had similar abilities. A female American crocodile, Crocodilus acutus, living in Costa Rica's Parque Reptilandia apparently got tired of waiting 16 years for a mate to appear and decided to fend for herself. Zoo workers discovered 14 eggs in her enclosure. Unfortunately, the final effect did not turn out as the crocodile probably assumed. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Biology Letters. Parthenogenesis, also called virgin birth, is a process of reproduction that occurs without the participation of a male, consisting in the development of embryos in an egg cell without the participation of a sperm. This phenomenon is not so rare in the animal world and in many species it occurs in the absence of males in the environment. This is how birds, some sharks, snakes and lizards, including the great Komodo dragons, can reproduce. Now the first recorded case of a captive female crocodile laying eggs. It took place in Parque Reptilandia in Costa Rica. The local crocodile, who had been living in seclusion for the past 16 years, one day laid as many as 14 eggs. What's more, it turned out that half of them contained embryos. However, after three months of incubation, none of the eggs hatched. It was decided to investigate the fetuses more thoroughly, including using a specialized program called Parthenogenius. What was obvious was confirmed, i.e., that the genetic material of the young that failed to hatch came only from their mother. Unfortunately, this case also exposes some weaknesses of parthenogenesis. Because the embryos created in this way are not always able to live independently, or, as in this case, to start this life at all. The case of a Costa Rican female crocodile has led scientists to conclude that parthenogenesis abilities can be extended to the so-called archosaurs, or primate reptiles. This is a group of evolutionarily advanced reptiles, which also includes crocodiles. Following this lead, we will come to the conclusion that dinosaurs and pterosaurs were probably also able to do this. In terms of whether the young born by virgin birth will turn out to be healthy, it looks different in different animals. For example, in boas and pythons, they seem to be healthy. However, not all snakes are so lucky. If we look at e.g. rattlesnakes, cobras, but also garter snakes or sea snakes, we find that in their case, such embryos are often dead or seriously deformed. Parthenogenesis is also possible in birds and sharks. But the health of their young is also different. Some of them actually turn out to be healthy. However, most of the young observed died prematurely anyway, surviving only a few months or a maximum of years. The new organisms created in this way seem to be quite poorly adapted to normal life. By the way, it is worth dealing here with the view that virgin birth is a characteristic way of reproduction for animals kept in captivity. Well, that's not entirely true. Such cases have also been observed among animals living in the wild. Post-truth era, human rationality has been declining for decades. Belief in a flat earth, the harmfulness of vaccines or other pseudoscientific theories is nothing new. Although one can get the impression that the widespread access to the internet and social media has contributed to the intensification of this phenomenon. However, according to recently published research, 
The society's contempt for scientific facts and the rather specific approach of the political class to truth are the result of a process that began several decades ago. Researchers from Wageningen University and Research, WER, and Indiana University have shown that the growing irrelevance of factual truth in public discourse is part of a trend that began decades ago. A new study finds that over the last 40 years, society and public debate have undergone an accelerated shift from the collective to the individual, and from rationality to emotion. The scientists published their findings in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. By analyzing the language of millions of books, researchers have found that the number of reasoning words such as determine and conclusion has steadily increased since 1850. On the other hand, the number of words related to human experience or emotions, such as feel and believe, decreased. But in the last 40 years, that pattern has reversed. It also found that the language used by the authors of the books had shifted from collectivistic to individualistic. As reflected in the singular plural ratio of pronouns like, I, and, we. Interpreting this synchronic shift in the language of books remains a challenge, says study co-author Johan Bollen of Indiana University. Interestingly, the nature of this reversal is found in both fiction and non-fiction. Moreover, we observe the same pattern in the New York Times articles, which suggests that this is not an artifact of the book Corpora we analyzed, emphasizes the researcher. Inferences about the drivers of long-term language patterns observed from 1850 to 1980 necessarily remain speculative, says lead author Martin Schaeffer of WER. In terms of trends from 1850 to 1980, it is possible that the rapid development of science and technology and socio-economic changes contributed to the increased status of the scientific approach which gradually penetrated culture, society and its institutions, from education to politics. As Max Weber argued, this could lead to a process of disenchantment, as the role of spirituality diminished in modernized, bureaucratic and secularized societies, explains Schaeffer. What exactly caused the observed long-term trend reversal around 1980 is even more difficult to determine. However, according to the authors, this may be related to the tensions resulting from changes in social and economic policy since the early 1980s, which were defended with rational arguments. But the benefits of them were not evenly distributed. For many social groups, these changes have brought poverty and marginalization, which, as the researchers suspect, has discouraged these people from rational arguments. The authors found that the shift from rationality to sentiment in the language of books accelerated around 2007 with the rise of social media. When factual words declined in all languages, while many more emotional words appeared. This trend paralleled the shift from collectivist to individualistic language. Regardless of the causative factors, our results suggest that the phenomenon of post-truth is associated with an imbalance between two basic ways of thinking. Reasoning and intuition, notes co-author Ingrid van der Leemput from the Warsaw University of Life Sciences. If this is true, it may not be possible to reverse the existing trend. Instead, societies may be forced to find a new balance, explicitly recognizing the importance of intuition and emotion, while making the most of the much-needed power of rationality and science. The researcher says,